So Rishi Sunak has apparently done a U-turn on green energy targets. Really? Just a few weeks after the energy bill was set for consideration after three readings in the House of Commons and the House of Lords approaching the final stage of royal assent. I don't recall him objecting to that. In fact, only nine MPs did object to that. A 450 page bill with a thousand pages were you to read all the links, did they? No, probably not. So what is this bill? Well, it gives the government the power to fine you up to £15,000 or one year in prison should you fail to meet energy performance targets. Authorities can enter your home without a warrant using reasonable force or force you to have energy assessments. It's you, Liz, but for homes. Can't afford to drive a car, can't afford to own a home. How are you going to pay the £15,000 while quite possibly a lien against your property? So that should you die or sell your property, they can cash in. It won't work, but it will be highly lucrative in the process. If you look at Newcastle, they generated a half a million pounds in six months from their green zone. So why won't it work? Okay, a third of the carbon footprint in the UK is from heating. But only 5% of properties in the UK are low carbon in their heating. Why is that? Well, 15, only 15% 15 of the housing stock in the UK was built after 1990. A real problem. A House of Commons committee um, suggested that they would need to retrofit 1 million homes per year for 30 years to meet um, the 2050 net zero targets. So what is their planned solution? Okay, well, you have three. You have heat pumps, you have heat networks, also known as district heating, Hungry Games, and hydrogen. Heat pumps. Well, the government are currently given about five to 6,000 um, of a subsidy towards people to um, get these heat pumps in their house. It's still gonna cost you seven to 12,000 pounds after that. But if you were to compare a four bedroom, the average four bedroom house um, with an, a gas boiler versus a heat pump, it's going to save you about two pounds per week. And that's if the price of electricity doesn't go up. If it does, the compressors are absolute energy vampires. So, I mean, low emissions, but twice the price. Wonder why people aren't jumping all over this. Then we move on to district heating, central heating for cities. The infrastructure isn't there. The pipes go back to 1960, so they're pumping boiling hot water through these pipes and they are bursting and causing havoc. You are into um, a 25 year contract, so it's almost a monopoly that is unregulated and up to 40,000 pounds to try and get out of it. People are experiencing intermittent or shutting up, shut off from their heating, huge bills. So that's not really going to work. And I think that, that this projection of you would need to get 18% of people on district heating. What it means by district heating is that it's centralized heating. We don't like that word at all, do we? Because then they can shut you off. You don't have an independent boiler. If there is maintenance or repairs, it's communal. So you are forced to pay. Again, not ideal. And where is this um, heat coming from? How are they generating this heat at source, at the central source? Well, 50% of it is gas. Then we have hydrogen, not even worth talking about, generated from their fossil fuels. And virtually none of it is low carbon and there is no infrastructure. So there is no solution to any of this. So it's really then just about generating um, money, getting the money from the people for the government. Only 1% of global CO2 emissions um, are from the UK. China increases by more than that in a year. So we are just exporting pollution and emissions. Does that, does that make any sense? But we are up Bricks Creek without a paddle and the transfer is being sent to the BRICS nations and the elitists are trying to get whatever they can from the middle earners while the ship sinks. But you get the government that you deserve.